So this is going to be a part two from my previous video, which I showed you how I was able to write, optimize and rank um, a blog post on a brand new website in just a couple of days. If you haven't checked out that video as yet, I highly recommend that you take a look at that video before watching part two. So in part two, we'll be going over on page content optimization. So how to actually optimize your content to increase the likeliness of ranking on the first page of Google. We'll also be going over some best practices for your title and your meta tags. We'll be talking about images and how to properly interlink so that you're um, increasing your chances of ranking for a variety of different keywords. So let's go ahead and get started. In the first video, we ended off when we generated the full content using ChatGPT. We used a combination of GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K in the playground mode. And as you can see, we were able to write a fairly in-depth article. The keyword that we're trying to rank for is the right garden tool set. That is the keyword in which we found in the part one of this video. So once we have the full article generated, now we need to do some optimizations to increase the likeliness of ranking on the first page of Google. So in order to do so, I'm going to open up Neuron Writer. If you haven't used Neuron Writer before, it is a content optimization tool. The first thing that you do is you enter the query in which you're trying to rank for. So again, as I mentioned, the keyword is gardening tools set. So we're going to enter that target keyword within Neuron Writer. And Neuron Writer is going to pull the most important ranking factors from the top ranked blog post for this specific keyword. So once it's completed, you can click on that keyword. And now this is where you'll be able to select the competitors in which you would like to have a reference for creating guidelines. So essentially, these are going to be the top ranked blog posts and you can select or deselect any irrelevant competitors. So for example, let's say we don't want to include Amazon listings into um, our competitive analysis because we're not trying to outrank Amazon. We're trying to outrank other blog posts. So I would deselect Amazon. If there's retail stores like Ikea or Walmart, I can also deselect that and select um, some more relevant competitors that are actually blog posts or websites. So once you've deselected and selected your competitors, you want to go ahead and click next. And this is where you'll actually be able to optimize your content. First, you want to make sure that you copy your content from ChatGPT and then you want to convert that to um, HTML. And once that's converted, then you want to paste it over into New Wine Writer. And as you can see here, it will already be listed by the H1, H2, H3 tags on New Wine Writer, and you're able to easily optimize your content. So right off the bat here, we see that we have a content score of 57, which is pretty good. Um, knowing that we haven't actually done any further optimization. So this is a really, really good start. We can first take a look at the terms in articles. These are going to be the terms that are included within the blog post content. And you can see how many times that um, keyword has been included and you can increase or decrease any keyword. And below the terms in article, you have the terms in header. So this is going to be your H1 terms and your H2 terms. So first, before we start optimization, let's go ahead and create a title and meta description. The prompt that you can use is you can tell ChatGPT to create an SEO optimized title and meta description based on the target keyword for this blog post. And this is going to be the title and meta tag in which we get back here. So the ultimate guide to choosing the best gardening tools set. Let's go ahead and copy this over. Very, very simple um, sort of title here, but very effective as well. So we can paste that into um, new and writer and let's see how that title does. OK, so it seems to be a pretty good title. Now let's go ahead and copy over our meta description. It seems a little bit long, so I'd probably go ahead and concise this because you don't really need to have long meta descriptions anymore. Google like short and right to the point meta descriptions. But let's go ahead and paste this in and see how it does. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, it is um, too many words. So we can go ahead and remove a sentence here and see what makes sense. So I'm going to remove this sentence here that says explore expert tips and recommendations to make an informed decision because we don't really have any target keywords within that specific um, sentence here. So let's go ahead and save and close. And now, as you can see, we went from a 57 to a 78 already um, just by adding in our title and our meta description. So we're already um, doing pretty well. Like I would say this is a pretty optimized piece of content, but we can further optimize it by starting with our H1 tag. So H1 tags is already doing pretty well. We just need to add maybe toolkit or hand tool or planting or best gardening within this specific H1. So what I've done is I've added in best gardening toolkit. And as you can see here, we are all the way up to an 81. So I've added in some other keywords in brackets here, and it makes sense within the title. I'm not just kind of stuffing that keyword because the title is also about the best gardening tool kit. So that's another method in which you can use if you want to add in some more keywords into your H1s. You can add a bracket and add in a relevant keyword. 
So we're up to 81, which is pretty good. So now what we can do is we can optimize our H2 headings. So these are going to be our H2 headings. So let's go ahead and see what we can add in here. So once you've added in your H2 and H3 tags and you're happy with that, you can also go ahead and then optimize your terms in article. So these are going to be the keywords within the body paragraphs of your article. Anything in red, that means you've added in too many times. So for this specific keyword, which is tool, I've added in 79 times within this article and the recommended is between 4 and 34. But honestly, I don't really worry about this metric too much because naturally you'll include keywords um, like tools and garden a lot more within this article because you're talking about gardening tools. So I don't really worry about if I add a keyword too much, but if there's a keyword in which I can add some more into our articles, then I would go ahead and do so. Again, for this keyword, we've added in a little bit too many times, but again, I'm not too worried about that. So for the terms in articles, I would say, honestly, it's pretty good for this specific um, blog post. You don't want to overly optimize your article. Um, you don't want to spend too much time on one specific article. To be honest, I don't really do this process for every single article that I post. But what I usually do is if I post a bunch of articles and one's doing pretty well, then I'll come back and further optimize it so that I can get a higher ranking for those articles. So you don't want to spend too much time because you don't know exactly what's going to rank on Google and what's not going to rank. So we have some other features here. You can um, generate some more outlines, H1, H2 tags if you need it. You can also um, use the built-in AI writer to expand any text or to write content right in Nuine Writer. Now, you can also add some stock images on Nuine Writer. So you can head over to Media, Stock Images, click Search, and it'll search up your target keyword. And as you can see here, you have images um, already um, populated by um, new and writer. So you don't have to use an external tool. We can go ahead and simply um, go to whichever section we want to add that image in. We can click on that image, click hot link image, and we can add an alt text, which is highly recommended that you do. Okay, so I'm going to add in the target keywords there, and then I can insert that image right into the article. So we have a beautiful image there, and we can just continue and repeat that as many times as we like for um, these images. So this makes it really, really simple for you to insert images into your articles, and it makes it very easy for you to not have to go to a different tool. You can do it all within New Run Writer. So that's how I would add in my images and I would optimize my content using New Run Writer. And also that's how I would include my title and my meta description. Lastly, let's talk about interlinking. Interlinking is very, very important because interlinking allows you to be able to pass on any link juice you may have within a specific website. So for example, if I take a look at the blog post for Word Rocket AI, and by the way, Word Rocket is going to be an AI tool that I'll be releasing very soon. So if you wanna get early beta access, check out the link in the description below today's video. But the most popular post on this website is how to achieve 0% AI detection on your blog post. So essentially, it's a blog post that shows users how to bypass AI detection tools. Now, because this blog post is getting a lot of traffic and you're going to find within your own websites that there's going to be a few amount of URLs that get the most amount of traffic, what you want to do is you want to send that traffic from one URL to the other URL and you're able to do that through interlinking. So it's useful to have an interlink to another related blog post or related topic within your article so that users can go from one article to the next. They can stay on your website longer, which will be a positive signal to Google that people like reading your content. They stay on your website for longer, which will then allow you to rank higher um, on Google for specific and other keywords. So that's why interlinking is so important and it's obviously going to vary depending on your niche so it's best not to overthink interlinking just read through your article and think about what is going to be a related piece of content that users may want to read after they've read this article or while they're reading this article and just include that within the relevant sections of your blog post and interlinking also helps you to get your blog post indexed because if you're interlinking from a blog post that's already on google then google will be able to read um, that blog post a little bit quicker and allow you to get those new URLs indexed a lot quicker. It's also good practice for you to include a couple external um, links. So you want to include some high authority links um, to things that are relevant for your blog post. Again, this helps with your authority. This helps with getting your content um, indexed. But overall, it's a good SEO practice for you to include a couple of external links within your article. So that's my approach to on-page content optimization, title and meta tags, 
images and interlinking. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in today's video. But as always, I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.